This is Australia. Since you're here, you'd better play the game. Welcome to Australia. I'm John, and today I'm doing a short demo game as the red player, with Mandy as the blue player. Here we go. Here's what we get in the box. The board is a map of the southeastern part of Australia. This is the time track, and it also serves as a score track at the end of the game. There are four sets of player bits. Each player gets a port, 20 cubes, 3 discs, 20 railway tracks, 7 of each kind of farm, and a player board. This is known as their port. Here are the military units available for purchase. These are the resources that you can mine for. Players start with 2 coal, 2 iron and 4 gold. Phosphates are white and add victory points as well as gold when mined. There are three card decks. Events. These happen when the old one token moves into an odd numbered space on the time track. The personalities are here to help and can be recruited as an action. More on them later. The old one cards are multi-purpose. They determine if and when the old ones move around, the direction of movement, as well as determining the wins and losses of combat. Here we have the old one tiles, showing the amount of damage to inflict to kill, and the victory points earned by doing so. Shuffle these into three face down piles. There is also a purple disc and cubes for the old one player. The VP tokens, sanity tokens, will be covered later. Here's how we set up the game. First, randomly distribute 13 of the 20 survey tiles onto each hex that has a survey triangle, and then flip them and rotate them so the arrow points north. Now let's seed the map based on the survey. Each tile shows exactly what to add and where. So, for example, this tile will result in three coal being added here, three gold here, a phosphate disc to the north, and two old one tiles here and here. The old ones are always placed face down and must match the level that is indicated on the map. However, if this same hex is indicated as receiving an old one from multiple directions, then the level is upgraded. So for example, this level 1 tile would be replaced with the level 2 tile. Multiple resources can be added to the same hex from different surrounding tiles. Resources can be placed with an old one tile. Old ones are only placed in numbered outback hexes, so this here has no effect. Resources are never placed in coastal hexes. OK, now we just need to prepare the decks. There are 10 of each level of event card. Separate them by level, shuffle them, and draw 5 of each, layering them with 3s on the bottom and 1s at the top. The remaining 15 are returned to the box unseen. Now we shuffle the personality cards and display 5 next to the deck. Finally, shuffle the old one cards. Now we're ready to play. The player further back, and that includes on top of a stack, is the active player. We place our ports in reverse player order, so blue goes and then red. I can't place mine within two hexes of another port. We have several turns to explore, build, farm and equip before the old ones become an active player, so I'm going to start by building railway here. I put one of my red cubes into the build railway action box which cost me three time points. I pay one iron and one coal and lay two tracks that connect to my port. Blue also wants to explore, so she also builds, but she doesn't want to traverse hills so can start with a two time point railway like so. As she is now behind me, she can take another turn. She decides to mine the resources that her railway has reached. She takes all three of a type and puts them in her warehouse. To be efficient, I want to use as many actions as I can before spending a time point to retrieve all my cubes. I can repeat an action already taken, but it'll cost a gold for every cube already in the box. Here's a case. 
I really want to recruit Corporal Jones, but I used this action already. If I retrieve my cubes now, it'll be Blue's turn and she might grab him. I think it's worth the investment, so I pay one gold to add a second cube to this action and get my man. The other actions available are buy military unit, so pay the gold cost and get one piece of hardware or up to two infantrymen. Import and export, take two resources, coal or iron, or sell two, or take one and sell one. Farming, place one to three farms on the corresponding land and earn a gold each for the food. To do this, I must be connected by railway, and the land must be empty apart from railways. Farming is one way to earn victory points. Attack, I'll come back to that in a moment. Recruit help, take one of the five personalities on display. Lastly, retrieve cubes. This is how I get my used cubes back. It costs a time point. After a few turns, the game might look something like this. Note that the old one's purple disc has been overtaken by both of us. They are now an active player. The purple disc always moves just one time point at a time. This means several things, almost all dangerous. Firstly, whenever their disc lands on an odd number, these are the illuminated spots. A new event card is flipped and actioned. Secondly, at each purple move, we must check for old one movement by flipping two old one cards. Any face-up old ones on the board that appear with a white circle here, like so, trigger them to move. They move towards the closest target farm or port. If there is a choice, then they go to the direction indicated at the top of the card. Old ones moving around is both good and bad. They may move within range so that I can attack them with my units and gain victory points, but they also might blight my farm, denying me points. The worst scenario is one of these guys arriving at a port before you are adequately prepared to defend your patch. Any player losing their port means the game ends immediately. Let's see what happens from here. There is a four-point Shoggoth within range now, and it's inconveniently blocking my railway. I decide to take a preemptive attack to try and damage or kill it before it gets too close. So I take the attack action, selecting my infantry, artillery and airship to go into the combat. I move these up to the field, which cost me two time points, and combat ensues. Flip the cards one at a time and check the Shoggoth result. Symbols here indicate which units damage it, whereas symbols here show damage I take. This is a risk management exercise. I need to do as much damage as possible without losing my units or going insane. I lose a sanity. Not a good start. Now down to two. That's more like it. My artillery does two damages to the ugly one. I've taken a damage and can choose where to place it except for my airship. That damage is marked independently and I place it on my infantry. My airship does one damage and takes one damage. If I carry on and take another damage, I could blow up my airship, so I decide to retreat it to the barracks for repair. Finally, I slay the beast, but take two damage in return. I can put one on artillery, but this means I lose the top infantry. So, my victory. It means I get to take the old one tile. It'll earn me four points at the end. Many of the personality cards are helpful in combat by giving you extra firepower, sturdier hardware or extra sanity, etc. I was lucky there, but I may not be so lucky against a stronger beast. I'm going to recruit some more helpful people. There are several in the display if I can get them. Count Yago, he gives you extra sanity. There's Ivan Karpov, he automatically does two damage to any old one that reaches your port. There's Professor Guion, he reduces the time point cost of attacking. There's Boris Krapp. He increases the damage capacity of your armoured trains to four. Now the old ones take a turn. Oh, it's an assassination. We remove the two rightmost cards and draw two new ones. So much for my plans. Well, we've reached the end of this short demo game. We had to team up to slay a powerful loyalist, and we managed to hold on to our port, so the scoring goes like this. I have three farms still in good nick, so that's six points. One phosphate earns me three points. Three points from the shared slaying of the loyalist. Total of 18 points from the old ones I killed. 
so that's 30 in total. Blue did similarly, but pit me at 32 points. The old ones still had several large guys undiscovered on the board, beating us with their total of 47. They score face value for revealed and double for unrevealed guys, plus extra points for farms they blighted. And so that's my simplified run-through. Next time I'll be better prepared. <laughs>